This is not an ordinary railroad and no ordinary train. It's been in the works for over 60 years and the world said it could never be done, but the world was wrong. Some railways are all about speed like Shanghai Maglev, the fastest train in the world, traveling at 431 kilometers per hour. Other lines spark the imagination because of their gargantuan length, like the Trans-Siberian Express, the longest single rail system in the world, stretching across 25% of the world's circumference between Moscow and Vladivostok. But none is more impressive than the Qinghai-Tibet Railway. If you enjoy our content, make sure to like and subscribe to One Mega Projects. Known as the Third Pole or the Roof of the World, with temperatures reaching minus 40 degrees Celsius, the Qinghai-Tibet Plateau is one of the most forbidding places on the planet. It's three times bigger than France, and it's China's most isolated region. With an average altitude of 4,500 meters, about the same height as the highest peak in the Swiss Alps, the air is perilously low in oxygen. It's roughly 40 to 50 percent of what is available at sea level. Unsurprisingly, the region is very sparsely populated, and the locals have adapted to living at high altitude over hundreds of years. But for anyone else, it's a serious hazard. This is an area where breathing is very hard, and even walking slowly or bending down to tie your shoelaces is arduous and requires a huge effort, let alone doing hard physical labor. It's so hostile that it's like building a railway on Mars. But despite the extreme environment, the highest railway on the planet was built here, stretching for 1,956 kilometers from Xining in southern China to the famed Tibetan city of Lhasa. The locomotive is a 138-ton diesel-electric beast with a combined output of 8,000 horsepower. Immediately behind the engine, there is an electricity generator carriage. It's the train's life support system supplying power, heat, and most important of all, oxygen for the passengers and crew. In order to counteract the high altitude, the specially designed passenger carriages are equipped with oxygen generating units, creating an oxygen enriched environment similar to an airplane, but not pressurized like an aircraft. Additional oxygen supplies, enough for every passenger, and doctors are always on board. But even so, 75% of passengers will suffer some form of altitude sickness. The dangers of altitude sickness, as well as other complications, are very real, and a few have actually died, with a 75-year-old man from Hong Kong becoming the first person to die on the train back in 2006. The train voyage is undeniably a magnificent experience but it can be very perilous. A passenger health registration card is needed before you can even get on the train, part of which is a disclaimer stating that you understand the risks of traveling on the Qinghai-Tibet Railway. Medical advice recommends taking five days to climb to the Tibetan Plateau altitude to allow time to acclimatize, but the train ride from Xining to Lhasa takes only 22 hours. The railway crosses four mountain chains, five major rivers, and land higher than any mountain in the American Rockies, with the highest point in the Tangela Pass, situated at 5,072 meters above sea level. It has a total of 675 bridges, making a remarkable 160 kilometers of elevated track, and also 10 tunnels with a total of 9.5 kilometers of the line traveling underground. The Fenghuoshan Tunnel, or the nearest door to heaven, is the highest railway tunnel in the world, sitting at 4,905 meters above sea level. Between Golmud and Lhasa, there are 44 stations, out of which 38 are unmanned, controlled from a central system in Xining. The Qinghai-Tibet Railway also has the distinction of having the highest railway station anywhere in the world, the Tangela Mountain Railway Station sitting at an astonishing altitude of 5,068 meters. That's over three and a half times the height of Britain's highest mountain. This area is almost completely uninhabited, and while the train occasionally stops at the station to allow another pass, passengers are not allowed to go outside. It's a record-breaking station, and one that serves pretty much no purpose whatsoever. 
The reasons for building this insanely difficult stretch of railway through a wasteland was always justified by the Chinese government as a way to improve trade with Tibet and to raise the standard of living in that region. However, many believe that the line is a political and military statement, a way of drawing the Tibet region closer to China and reducing any notion of independence even further and to enable large numbers of Chinese to move there, overrunning the culture of local Tibetans. You see, on 6th of October 1950, the Chinese military crossed the border into Tibet, and the independent country quickly found itself under the control of China. Nine years later, a failed uprising saw Tibetan leader the Dalai Lama flee into India, and six years later, the Tibet Autonomous Region within China was officially established. The idea to build this controversial railway dates back to the 1950s, when it was conceived as a means for the Chinese to supply troops into Tibet. But to build a railway, first they needed a road, so the Chinese government sent a vast labor force equipped with basic tools in the harsh conditions of the Tibetan plateau. Around 3,000 workers died from altitude sickness. In 1959, the capital of Qinghai province, Xining, was finally connected with the rest of the country with the completion of a railway from Lanzhou. But it would have to wait 25 years until the line continued further south into the Tangola Mountains. The first 815 kilometers from Xining to Golmud was opened for service in 1984. The ultimate and most challenging leg of the journey the continuation towards Lhasa had to wait again until the 29th of June 2001. Waiting for technological advancements that aim to prevent a recurrence of the human toll tragedy witnessed during the original road's construction. Around 140,000 people worked on this section of the line, but this time over 100 infirmaries with 2,000 doctors and nurses were placed along the railway, one every 18 kilometers. 21 oxygen-making stations were constructed, about one for every 50 kilometers, with the oxygen then being delivered up and down the line. 25 emergency hyperbaric oxygen chambers were also installed. However, still 40 deaths were recorded by the Chinese government during construction, but interestingly they were labeled as other causes and not because of altitude issues. What also made the construction next to impossible for engineers came not from the conditions above ground, but what lies below. Over half of the planned route across the Tibetan Plateau, 632 kilometers of the line, travels across permafrost with depths of a few meters all the way up to 50 or 60 meters. Solid icy land in winter, but mush in summer. The railway across the more solid sections of the permafrost is built atop a loosely piled granite rock embankment ranging from 2 to 10 meters in height, allowing air to circulate freely in between. This prevents excess heat gathering below, keeping the ground frozen even during summer. In some areas, ventilation pipes were buried beneath the tracks to allow cold air to circulate underneath. For the most precarious locations along the railway, a passive cooling system that requires no power is employed. Ten-meter-long pipes filled with ammonia, known as thermosiphons, were sunken five meters into the ground. The idea is to channel the heat from below ground and transfer it upwards, releasing it into the environment from the top of the tube, maintaining the ground's frozen state. Where the permafrost was deemed too fragile, the line uses bridges or elevated pylons. The 11.7-kilometer Qingshuihe Bridge stands as the world's longest bridge ever constructed atop permafrost. The railway was completed on the 12th of October 2005 and opened for its first trial service on the 1st of July 2006. The construction process took only five years to complete, culminating in a final cost of $4.2 billion. Thanks for staying with us until the end, and we'll see you in the next video.